the sensory component of the vagus is just as um, broad and far-reaching as the motor component. There's a somatic component, which is um, stuff that you can feel and you know where it is, um, the external acoustic meatus, and the external surface of the tympanic membrane, so the external surface of your eardrum. So if you are um, drying out your ear with a Q-tip and you poke too far in there, that's going to hurt, and it's a bad idea, but the sensation of that is going to be carried along the vagus. It also uh, innervates parts of your pharynx um, for uh, somatic, somatic sensory innervation. The special component of the vagus is taste, and it's for areas within the pharynx and the epiglottis. So it's not like this is a real prominent area of, of the taste sensation. Um, most of it, of course, is going to be on your tongue, but there are a few taste buds back there, and cranial nerve 10, the vagus, is what's going to carry information back into the CNS. The visceral part is, again, really broad, just like the visceral motor part. So any kind of pain coming from your heart or your lungs or your GI system all the way down to that splenic flexure, so all your small intestines um, and, your, and part of your colon, all of that is going to be relayed uh, through your vagus up to the brainstem and then to the insula for perception. In summary, which cranial nerves carry parasympathetic, i.e. visceral efferent information? What organs, glands, or structures are innervated by these parasympathetic nerves? How many modalities are found in the vagus? Remember, it's a complicated one. What regions of the vis body receive visceral efferent or parasympathetic innervation from the vagus? And what regions of the body send visceral afferent innervation along the vagus towards the, the central nervous system? Once you have all of these kinds of concepts down and understand them, you're ready for the assessment.